Somebody walks into our synagogue, a very wealthy man, part of a major, CEO of a major, major company. And he talks to the main chevra of my shul. And he says, get the rabbi a new piece of property. The moment you put a down payment on it, I give you $350,000. I want my name on the synagogue. Why not? Three fifty, dollars get a down payment. All right. We find this place. We get the down payment, and now I have to come to him for the three fifty. dollars Go to his office, and I remember him and his wife are sitting there, and his office is huge. He has workers everywhere. I mean, this is a massive company. And he, we, we, we schmoozed. We had a l'chaim even before he wrote the check. And he goes and he says to his secretary, write me out a $350,000 check to Chabad of Bel-Air. And I'm just sitting there like, whoa, this is really happening. Wow. And the secretary comes in, whispers in his ear. And then he turns to me, he says, I just made a major acquisition. And I don't have $350,000, you know, liquid to give you right now. But in a month, I'll be able to. But can I give you $25,000 now? I said, sure. So then he looks at me and he says, I know. You think I'm nickel and dime in you? I said, no, not at all. Takes out a napkin. And he says, I owe the rabbi $325,000. And he makes his wife sign it like we owe it. I said, it's not necessary. You're good for it. I know him for years. Great. A month comes later. I go visit him and he has pancreatic cancer. Stage four. He didn't know it before. He's now in the hospital. He dies. At Shiva, it was jammed. His wife got me a beautiful envelope, real nice, beautiful envelope. But you can tell there's thought in this envelope with a beautiful card inside. But I'm not going to open it yet. I'm not going to open it in front of her, but I wanted to see what $325,000 looked like. So I'm driving away. And I said, I can't handle it anymore. So I didn't stop. I open up the envelope and there I see $5,000. Dear Rabbi, without you, I couldn't get through this tough time. Your family has been phenomenal. But if God wanted my husband's name to be on the synagogue, my husband should have given you the money itself. Please do not ask for another penny. Now you got to realize, I have a down payment and a shell. I need the money to do all the construction work. I don't know what I was going to do. I am looking at massive debt. I already signed up for over a quarter of a million dollars in responsibility. Plus, I have to pay the mortgage. Where am I going to get this money from? To my mazel, I had to fly to Boston for a wedding. I said, if I'm going in, it was Gimel Elo. That was the wedding. I said, if I'm going in for the wedding... I'm going to stop off by the oil. And I go to the Rebbe and I say to the Rebbe, I only have forty, fifty thousand dollars 50000 that has come in over the summer. The money that comes in for the high holidays is what Chabad Belia lives on for a long time. And I say, Rebbe, Ma'ayin Yavoy Ezri. I said, you've got to help me out here. Weeks go by, Rosh Hashanah comes, and I see an old guy in the front row just bawling his eyes out, bawling his eyes out during davening. He comes back the next day, he's bawling his eyes out. I say to him, please don't leave so fast. I would love to invite you, my family, and all the other people that are going to be for lunch, please stay. He says, one minute, let me in. So he goes and asks his wife, his daughter, the family. All of a sudden, they're all coming to lunch. We're going around the table, everybody's introducing themselves. And he goes and he says to me, you don't know who I am. So I go, please tell me. He says, you're an Ebbe. Not the Ebbe that everybody calls an Ebbe. The one before. You know, he was in Varsha during the war. I go, yeah. He says, you should know. He didn't sleep. I love this man. I said, why? He says, he never slept. He was making false passports. And I was working with him. Let's get it out. I didn't go to sleep if he didn't go to sleep. And all of a sudden, after two weeks that I joined in, his Hasidim came to him and said, you got to get out. The Nazis are coming. 
So they pack real quick. And I jumped onto the board of the car that the Rebbe was leaving on. And the Rebbe looks at me and he says, no, Max, you have to stay here. You have to continue making the false passports. See, this is what he says to me. He says, Rebbe, I'm not your chassid. I don't have to listen to you. But I worked for you. I will go wherever you go and continue working for you. Then the Rebbe says to him the following. If you stay here, I am maftir that you and your family will survive the war. So he looks at the Rebbe and he says, I have your word? He goes, yeah. I jumped off the board. Eventually he was caught. But as we see, he lived, his wife lived, and a lot of his family got out. Anyway, back to the story. So he's sitting there, and he goes like this. I so enjoy this service because I came to America and right near me there's a reformed temple. This is not, this is not my service. This is not what I remembered. But you had a baltilla, not a husband that sings songs for himself. It brought me back to the good old days. He says, I heard you are building a... A synagogue. He says, I want you to know, I love doing that. I want to help. So if you ever ask, Ma'ai in you, Ezri? Eh, Max, Ezri, I will be your help. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. My head is going like this. I just went to the and I begged the Rebbe, Ma'ai in Yezri. And he says, if you ever ask, Ma'ai in you, Ezri? I got flushed. So I said, can I meet with you tomorrow? Because you know when someone says he wants to help, you get it done fast. He says, yes, I brought him to this place where we're sitting in right now. This place was basically skin and bones. He wrote me out a $150,000 check right then and there. And all I can think of is, I go to the oil, Help me. This place is for you, Rebbe. This is for to bring Yidden back to Yiddishkeit. And the Friedrich Rebbe says to the Rebbe, I got this one. I know the player that 